When developing a new product, one of the most important decisions you can make is the type of process that will be used to produce it. Someone making 10 medical devices a year has very different concerns than someone making thousands of consumer products. You need to consider price, quantity, and the aesthetic and physical limitations of the process you'll be using. Let's start with a process most people are familiar with, injection molding or hard injection. In injection molding, a material is melted and injected under pressure into a tool where it is cooled, solidified, and ejected. Injection molding is so popular because you can get a wide variety of textures and appearances just by varying the material and the texture of the tool, which doesn't impact part cost. However, because the tool has to withstand such great pressures and temperatures, it leads to a more expensive tool than other processes. One downside to injection molding is that tool cost goes up exponentially with part size. So if you're making a low quantity of very large parts, it's often not economically feasible to use injection molding. In this case, we're rim molding. In rim molding, a two-part liquid is injected and mixed within the mold, where a chemical process then hardens it, where it can be ejected and used. The advantage of rim is that the tool cost is much lower because they're made out of aluminum or fiberglass. While appearances can be applied within the mold, there's often more manual finishing steps, which drives up part cost relative to hard injection. One disadvantage to both processes we've discussed so far is that there's a relatively long lead time between completing a design and having parts in hand, often six to eight weeks. This is valuable time when beta testing of a product can occur with limited quantities. So if you have a low quantity and a short schedule, a good process is cast urethane. Cast urethane, like rim, uses a two-part liquid, which is mixed and injected into a mold where it hardens and is extracted. The difference is the mold is typically made out of soft silicone, which is cast over a master. It requires much more hand finishing, though, because the silicone mold allows for more flash. Also, the silicone mold is only good for about 20 pieces, so it's not a very good long-term solution. If you have parts that are too big for typical hard injection with walls over a quarter inch, but quantities that are higher than rim will allow, a good alternative is structural foam. Structural foam is a thermoplastic process, just like injection molding, but a gassing agent is introduced which fills the mold, leading to lower pressures within the tool, which drives down tool cost relative to hard injection. However, because this gassing agent is introduced, there's always swirls in the surface, which lead to more finishing because you have to paint the product. If you have very simple parts or parts with only one visual surface, a good process to use is thermoforming. Thermoforming uses a thermoplastic, which is heated until flexible but not molten, and then using air pressure is forced into or over a mold. The mold cost is cheaper because you only need one side of a mold. However, the part cost goes up because there's a large amount of waste where the material that's not used has to be trimmed away. Another consideration for thermoforming is that the aspect ratio of your part impacts whether or not it can be made. Wide but uh, short parts are very easy to make, however, tall, narrow parts are difficult because the aspect ratio thins the material as it stretches, which can lead to tearing. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at studiored.com. We offer UX, UI, industrial design, engineering, prototyping, and short-run production. Thank you.